President Medvedev is waiting to see how his proposal for a new security treaty will go down with world leaders. He sent them details of the initiative which he believes would see the end of the Cold War legacy. Let's get more on the pact from our correspondent, Aksana Boyka. Aksana, thank you for joining us. So, uh, what's the basis of President Medvedev's proposal? Well, the president's proposal is based on several important principles. The main one is that no party to the treaty should strengthen its security at the expense of other countries that join uh, this uh, treaty. That would, for example, mean that uh, the countries will be banned from allowing its territory to be used for an attack or any other actions that uh, can compromise the security of its neighbors or its partners. Uh, for example, in practical implication, that would mean that before the United States would set any uh, bases, military bases in Russia's neighborhood, it would be obligated to conduct negotiations with Russia, as well as vice versa. If Russia, for example, would like to uh, open a, set a, its military presence, say, in Cuba or in Venezuela, it would be obligated to uh, hold extensive consultations with its partners within this treaty once, of, of course, uh, after, of course, it, it is signed. Now, uh, another important uh, clause in this uh, treaty is the uh, collective security uh, principle. That would mean that if one country is attacked by an outside force, the rest uh, of the countries that signed this proposal would be obligated to uh, provide it with military, humanitarian and any other forms of assistance it may need. Aksana, this proposal, why now? Well, it's a very good question. The Kremlin uh, for a long time now has maintained that the current security arrangements in Europe, mainly NATO and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, uh, have been rooted in the thinking, in the logic of the Cold War that saw the Soviet Union and Russia as a result as an enemy. He also maintained, uh, the president also maintained that uh, the current uh, architecture, security architecture in Europe was uh, ill-suited to confront the uh, existing challenges and that uh, this uh, architecture should be changed to embrace Russia not only as a partner on the side but as an equal uh, member. Uh, the president pushed this proposal uh, on a number of occasions. He first introduced it back in June of 2008 but the lobbying, the Kremlin lobbying for this idea intensified after the uh, August 2008 war with uh, Georgia. And uh, speaking in September at the General Assembly, President Medvedev seemed to suggest that if this uh, treaty wasn't placed in August of 2008, this uh, war uh, may have never happened. And many political analysts here in Moscow agree with him. Here's what Mikhail Troitsky, a political analyst in Moscow, had to say. Those who worked on the drafts uh, actually did their best to avoid any interpretation that would allow someone to claim that this treaty could compromise anyone's collective security commitments. That is, this treaty is not aimed as trying to ease up mutual commitments within NATO. This uh, treaty clearly says that if uh, any small country feels threatened, then there may be a patron country, a larger country, who may raise the issue of this smaller country being actually threatened by someone else. So I think this is done to, uh, to alleviate all sorts of anxieties. Aksana, what's been the reaction to this proposal? Well, the European leaders have been uh, quite tepid in their reaction to this proposal. They expressed polite interest but uh, stopped short of embracing it. Uh, I, just a few weeks ago, I interviewed the EU foreign policy chief at the time, Javier Solana, and his reaction was quite typical. He said that uh, Moscow's ideas certainly deserved some attention, but at the same time, he said that uh, at the moment, uh, Europe has its own vision of what security in Europe should look like, and uh, therefore it was uh, pretty content with uh, the existing security architecture. But at the same time, there are also plenty of people in Europe who support this idea. Uh, we Earlier, we spoke to uh, Giulietta Chiesa, he's former uh, member of the European Parliament representing Italy, and here's what he told us. We have a document, very clear. It is a 
it seems to me a very good platform to begin a discussion. Uh, reading this document, uh, the first impression I have is uh, that it is designed more for uh, strengthening the internal security than uh, to defend uh, the uh, member of this future uh, agreement uh, from s outside attacks. It has been uh, conceived to avoid the situation like the war uh, of Georgia against South Ossetia. This is very clearly emerging from this uh, document. I believe it is a good step. The, the second question is to to see if uh, the other partners uh, are ready to begin this discussion. We understand that President Medvedev already uh, has had a chance to discuss his ideas, his security ideas, with uh, his counterparts in Germany and in France. And Nicolas Sarkozy, French president, uh, already suggested that this proposal needs to be discussed uh, at the uh, upcoming conference of the uh, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe that is expected to take place in Athens uh, in the beginning of December. Oksana Bojka, thank you very much for this indeed.